God for my lovely mother and her sister sitting next to her. Sister Arnita, uh, she, um, my aunt, her husband, Bishop, who passed, man, how long ago was it? Nine years, nine years ago. He became really a counselor for me, but the way he treated me was, I, I, I don't even want to get emotional, but he respected, it's like he would, you know, teach me things, but he would have a respect for what I was doing at the same time. I don't know if y'all understand that. Some people want to come in your life and boss you around. But my uncle understood the dynamic I was dealing with, so when he would give me information, it's the same now with Cam's dad, it would be catered to, well now, but I know things for you are a little different. And I appreciate that. Because when you're helping someone, you don't ever want to stomp out what God wants them to do that may be different from what you're doing. And that takes a wise man to do that. And I appreciate everything that Bishop taught me. He taught me a lot. So it's a blessing to have you here and uh, uh, children and not children, grandchildren. Well, children, no, no, no children, grandchildren, grandchildren. Amen, Chris Cullen and, and, and Taylor. So I appreciate y'all for being here. And uh, last night we had a lot of visitors and aunts and people and friends from back in the day and all of that, but it, it just turned out to be a wonderful experience. So I'm high off of all of that or whatever, but I do have a word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, but I'm tired in my body. Y'all don't know what it means. You know, y'all, when you're a certain age, you just say, I'm tired. You start getting 50, 51, 52, you tired in your body. That's different. That hit a little different, Darius. Amen. My body this morning told me to call it in. I had to fight it. The spirit said, shut up, Cameron. <laughs> We do that all day. It's just ridiculous. But uh, <laughs> I thank God, though. Yeah, thank God for my kids being here and everybody being here. All right. AdamantBeliever.com forward slash searchingyourheart.pdf. Look at your neighbor and say, searching your heart. Oh, whoo, are, are they back to the wall? I'm changing the subject. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, I don't want to go to hell. Because <laughs> it's hot down there. And if you ain't doing right, <laughs> preach that run folk off message. Amen. Amen. I told him not to open that. I said, no, keep it closed. Oh, no. Oh. Well, anyway, hey, folks want to be here. Praise God. Thank God for all of you. All the way back there. Thank God for you. Amen. All right. Look at your neighbor again and say, searching your heart. All right. And I've kind of, I'm going to preach this message to the, for the youth uh, council Sunday, but it's, you know, it's, it's for everyone. I just want the youth to make sure. Where the youth at? Wave your hands, youth. Put your hand down, Tanya. Well, I'm around them. It's time to search your heart. 2021, it's time to search your heart. You know, if you don't search your heart, society's going to do it. The New World Order is going to search your heart whether you want it to or not. I talked about it last week. All the stuff you were aspiring to be and do and get the praise of men and applause and be lifted up high and all those different things, they don't even matter anymore. They're pushing an agenda now and they don't care who you are. I, I tweeted the other day. I tweeted where some workers that say they have worked through the pandemic, they said during the pandemic we were heroes. Now we're being forced to take a vaccine. 
So that little time that they were, remember they were, uh, your, your heroes are the fire department and the health care. Remember they just celebrate and make sure all the commercials on TV, and now, they, now they're nobody. Because the agenda is all that matters to the New World Order. So during the New World Order, all that you hoped and wanted and all of that, man, you better figure out a way to make some money without them. Amen. Amen. Start you a business, start baking, cooking, building, whatever. Pray to the Lord. Look at somebody and say, pray to the Lord. Pray to the Lord and ask him to reveal a plan to you. Because big tech, big corporations, big pharma, all of that stuff, they're going to line up with Antichrist as fast as I can say it. They're lining up now. And they're going to push this agenda. So you got to look at somebody and say, search your heart. Search your heart. Find out what you really want. Find out what you're really looking for. Amen? Hey, amen? Yeah. All right. We are required of God to search our hearts no matter how young we are. So no matter how young you are, you are required of God to search your hearts. Jeremiah 17 and 10 says, I, the Lord, does what? Search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give how many men? Every man according to his ways. No matter how young you are. If you're young and you do the fool, you're going to get punished for it. Even if your parents don't catch you, life is going to catch you. Because every man is going to receive according to his ways. And according to what? The fruit of his doing. In court, according to what he is doing. No matter how young you are, you're going to receive the fruit of what you're doing. I mean, this young folks, suicide rate among young people is higher than it's ever been in our world's history. You don't hear nothing about it because they don't put that on the news. Why is the suicide rate high? Because folks are doing stuff that they regret and can't live past it. And they're getting the fruit of what they're doing. Can I keep going? Yeah. Amen. Once we are old enough to knowingly sin, we are old enough to search our hearts. So don't be trying to use your age as a pass. When you're old enough to figure out how to do that, <laughs> yeah. So you're old enough to search your heart. Our parents cover us until then, but our hearts are ours to search and not our parents once we begin to rebel. Did I just preach? Once you begin to rebel, it's you and the devil. Don't be looking for big mama's prayers. You tried to record them and play them. Nope. That's between you and the devil once you begin to rebel. And in 20 and 21, you'll get a demon in you so quick. You know, they've all been unleashed through CERN and through dark matter and all the stuff that's out. This demon's just looking for a body. So soon as soon as you go against the truth or your parents or whatever it is, a demon will jump in you very quick. You know how you know a demon got in you? Because it gets easier and easier for you to do the food. Yeah. I will keep preaching in here. Yeah, because the demon's going to cripple your conviction. What used to look bad and outrageous to you is common now and easy for you. Can I keep? James 4 and 17. Therefore the sin... Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is a what? Sin. So once you're old enough to know to do good and do it not, it's a sin. As a young person, you are always faced with the why did I do that after the fact syndrome. Amen, young folks. You ever just beat yourself up because you just can't figure out why you did it, but you know why you did it, but you still don't know why you did it. 
Y'all know that feeling. Like, oh, I'm so stupid. Oh, I'm stupid. <laughs> you know you've done that. You've had that conversation with yourself. With yourself. Stupid, stupid. Oh, you just stupid. <laughs> you all right in there? <laughs> you hear that? Boom, 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 boom. You just... I used to do that all the time. Don't even want to look in the mirror. You walk by the mirror, you don't even look. You just look. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> knew you was going to get in trouble. You knew you were going to get in trouble. Did it anyway. Then after you did it, go. Oh! How did I do that? Because I knew I was going to get in trouble. You having that crazy conversation with yourself. That's a schizophrenic conversation. Why did you do that? You knew you was going to get in trouble. I know. Man, this is real talk. Uh, Y'all can look at me like you want to. You know that's real. It's the aftermath of knowingly doing wrong and how the spirit of dumb got you once again. Anybody ever had to deal with the spirit of dumb? Man, that's an awful feeling. Oh, if you could just remember the feeling afterwards, before, you'd be okay. I'd never do it. That feeling, that dumb donkey feeling, when you just, Ooh! that feeling, if you could feel that before you did it, you wouldn't have done it. <laughs> First Corinthians 13 and 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I did what? That means I start thinking like a man. That means the older I got, what this passage is saying, the older I got and the smarter I, smarter I got, the more I had to change my behavior. Because if I kept doing the fool as a child into my adult years, then I'm going to have problems. But the devil wants to trap you into something as a kid. He wants people to label you as a young kid. So that he can have that label on you for the rest of your life. Yeah. Weakness of attitude becomes weakness of character. Einstein said that. Now, don't you be the ooh, Einstein? Yeah, he said it. It made sense. <laughs> a person can search their own heart, and a person that can search their own heart can avoid the spirit of dumb. So if you know how to search your own heart, you can keep yourself out of trouble. Your heart talks to you. It always warns you before you do it. Your heart always warns you. I don't, and this is, this is G. Craig 101. This is my personal feeling. I think, it, I think it's like that with everyone, saved and sinners. I believe that's why sinners have to be on substances. Somebody that's constantly doing the food, drinks, smokes, gets high, or something. Because I believe their heart that God made fights against them being dumb. And the only way to silence your heart is with a substance. They go together, doing the food and smoking a blunt. Doing the food and drinking the whiskey. Tennessee. <laughs> Specific. <laughs> Cold duck. <laughs> yeah, but everyone, anyone that makes a practice of doing the food, they practice a substance. Because they have to silence their heart. Wine did it at first. But then you need something stronger as your deeds worsen. Can I keep preaching in here? Luke 11. Oh, no, no, no. When you can take notice of your own behavior prior, look at somebody say prior. Prior to error, you will avoid the consequences of bad decisions. Prior. If you can count the cost prior to doing it. 
That's the beauty of being filled with the Holy Ghost, praying and reading your word. Anybody that's praying, reading their word, and getting before God, they're not out doing the food. I just clap. When you do the food, I know something to be true. You're not spending time with the Lord. God would win that battle if you were letting him fight it. <laughs> yeah, when you losing, you're not spending time with the one that could win it. Yeah. So, when you can take notice of your own behavior, you'll avoid the consequences of bad decisions. Luke 11 and 4, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. This is a prayer to lead us not into temptation. But you got to allow God to lead you not into temptation. You can't pray it and then go where the temptation is. You have to allow him. So if he says he can lead, if we're praying for him to lead us not, into temptation, that means he first has to be leading us. He's not leading you if you're not spending time with him. Whatever you're spending time doing, that's what's leading you. Amen? Some of y'all led by call of duty. Because that's all you do is play the game. Some of y'all led by BET+. Plus. Watching foolishness because all black movies are stupid. <laughs> stupid. Somebody can't handle that level of racism. I'm a racist when it comes to movies. How many black people in it? Oh, no, I ain't seen it. It, they didn't pass the threshold. It's too many. <laughs> the devil loves to do things subtly so that they can go unnoticed. Y'all, this is one of the most important things you're going to hear me say, especially to the young people in here. The devil loves to do things subtly so they go unnoticed. The devil never wants to be noticed. He wants to always make you think it's all you. Yeah. So he'll slip in a character flaw. But you just think you something and don't like and he'll slip it in. And then over time, people stop liking you. And then you think it's you. You're like, why don't nobody like me? Well, your attitude is stank. Then you start making decisions based on stankiness. You got to go find the stanky people. So you can have some friends. I'm preaching in the house. Yeah, yeah. Hey Amen. Me and my wife, we got the blimp view. See all these people? Y'all see people. Me and my wife, we got the whole blimp, blimp view. So when stank walk in the door, we can tell you where it's going. It's going to go over here because that's the stank crowd. It's going to go over here because that's the gossip crowd. It's going to go over here because that's the talking about me and Sabate the crowd. It's going to go over here. That's the crowd right there that's just going to hell. That, that one. Going to avoid all these good folks. This person could build up the character. This person could teach them how to make money, could get them a job. This person right here could teach them a trade. This person right here could teach them how to do this. This person right here could build them up spiritually. This person right here could enrich their family, show them how to raise and tempt their kids, all of that. They're going to go through all of that like the labyrinth and end up fighting the Minotaur. Yeah, they go through all of that. Cause, you know why? Because when they walked in, stank was on them. Yeah, don't they do that in the youth department, uh, J. Brian? Yes, yeah, that's where it starts. Because they only reflect in their parents in there. Whoever don't like what I'm saying, bingo. Yeah, if, if you had a problem with what I just said, look at somebody say, search your heart. The 
devil loves to do things subtly so that they go unnoticed. So he don't want you to even understand. He don't want you to see it. A bad friend choice. Do you know one bad friend choice could end your life? I mean, mess you up forever. I mean, forever. Unrepairable messed up. One bad friend choice. Somebody that hates themselves. If they hate themselves, you better know they hate you too. They, they, whoo, they can't love you and hate themselves. They hate themselves, they out to get you. So they only befriended you to keep you down with them. Uh, one bad friend choice. A bad Google search. How many of you know bad Google search can change your life forever? You search the wrong word. Change your life. Or a feeling of rejection or neglect. If you don't like yourself, you'll start making people not like you. But it's a feeling of rejection or neglect if you feel bad about yourself. You don't like the way you look. You're going to hurt people. Can I just tell the truth? As a young person, you will hurt people because you'll get around people to talk about the person that you feel looks better than you. Don't you direct that to the young folks. That's old folks. That's old folks too. Or the people that have what you wish you had. You get around the people that talk about them because you don't have it. I'm trying to celebrate folks. Thank God for what they have. Brother, you got what? Dude, what? What the Lord bless you with? Because he's a big God. He's a big God. So if he gave you that, hey! And that don't mean I got mine. Oh, if he gave you that, then I know I got that. Don't mean that. You just celebrated because the kingdom just increased itself. If we're supposed to be brothers and sisters in the Lord, one person come up, the kingdom came up. Me and my wife, we never had a problem with nobody. We had rich millionaires coming in our one-bedroom apartment with the mental institution bed. The one bed and the baby bed next to it. Me, Landon, and Vicky, and uh, me, Landon, Vicky, and somebody in there, all in that one room. Hey, Amen. I thank God. I said, uh, "What's his name?" David came last night. David, man, he walked outside, and when he saw my car, he was like, he started announcing it to everybody. I remember when, <laughs> because we had to borrow. Day. When we first got married, we had to use his truck because we didn't have any transportation he let us keep his truck for weeks until I found a job and was able to get on my feet and they didn't have much at the time but he was he let me use it and he remember when he went outside he was like oh <laughs> you know he's stupid too but he just celebrated it man we don't do that with each other are you kidding My wife will tell you, boy, when I first got approved for my first vehicle loan, I, I thought I was a millionaire. And it was a, what, a Suzu Rodeo. Went and got it in the rain. I think it was new, though. It was new, but it was a Suzu Rodeo. You remember them had a, like a 40,000 mile limit on them. After 40,000, it's gonna break down. The head gonna crack. Ain't that right, amigo? <laughs> I ain't gotta mess with Jeff. I was so happy I, because I got it. My credit, I built my credit up. Man, I was so happy I got that car. And that's all I needed. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, I would drive this car. I would drive the wheels off of this car. And I'm not thinking I'm just gonna drive this temporarily until I can get the big blessing. I never said that. That was the big blessing. Went from walking and buying trucks. 
bought my car on foot. Y'all ain't never done that. Took a bus to the dealership. So don't you be looking at what I have now. You see the glory, but what? You don't know the story. You don't know the story. But a bad friend choice, a bad Google search, a feeling of rejection or neglect, or feelings of jealousy and envy can slowly but what? Surely build the wrong attitude in you over time. Then you get to the place to where you're acting like this and you don't even know it. You just wonder why all the mess of the church finds your house. All the mess on the job finds your cubicle. You can't figure it out. Why does mess follow me everywhere? Let me answer that. Because you messy. How about that? How about that? Yeah, but over time it happened so slowly. You didn't even know. Proverbs 4 and 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of what? Evil men. Once others start reacting to your attitude, it will begin to look like it's everyone else and not you. <laughs> Don't you hate that? It's everyone else but you. Why didn't you talk to so-and-so? I saw you just walk by another. Oh, I got a problem with her. Why? Because you just don't know. She mean. Oh, okay. But, but, but why, why didn't you? I saw you over here with, what's her name? And you wouldn't even talk to her. She mean. Oh, brother so-and-so was over here tried to wave at you, and you looked the other way. Oh, he's mean. That's three means in three different directions. Uh, everybody ain't mean. I think somebody look at somebody and say, search your heart. <laughs> Gonna keep going. Yes. This is a major trick of the enemy in youth and adults. When you do not search your heart, you will begin to believe that people are against you when they're not even thinking about you. Yeah. you they're not thinking about you? Ooh, you're not that important. Do you know you're not that important? Let me tell you. Ask me. Text me. Email me. I'll tell you you're not that important. I promise you they're not thinking about you. That folks come in this service while I'm up preaching and I mean get mad, storm out. What's wrong? Man, he talking about me. You're not that important. I'm not using all of this battery and this microphone, this battery juice, and this electricity and sitting in this heat thinking about you, getting up here to preach about you. Bro, you better know I will come right to your face and tell you what I'm thinking. All the brothers at ABC, don't you know that? I mean, don't, isn't that a thing? Amen, the only folk I don't go to is men's wives. I just go to the man. And if that, amen? And if that's the way you want your house, fine. Correcting no man's wife. It's not my place. Can I keep going? Galatians 6 and 3. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he does what? When he thinks himself to be something when he is nothing. You think you that important for folks to be thinking and talking about you. So you use the time. Hashata. The time we assemble to come together to worship the Lord and you in here tripping in the church. The time we come to reverence the creator of all things. Great God Jehovah knew you, numbered all your hairs. We come in here to worship and praise him. Sing his praises, hear a word, and you in here thinking, you important. In here being contrary. 
Would you be contrary in church? Why are they being contrary, J. Brian, in the youth group? You're just a youth. Why are you being a contrary youth? How are you a pre-Jizzy? A pre-Ahab? A pre-me? How you learn to be a witch that young? You're too young to be a witch. You're too young to be jive. Can I keep going? This is good to me. And it ain't blessing the young folks. It's blessing all folks. Amen. Somebody need to look at somebody and say, search your heart. Search your heart. Why you want that reputation? Why you want to be the one that roll your eyes at everybody? How you doing? Why do you want to be her? Hey, sister. This looks look like it hurt. If you stop doing it, the pain will go away. But why do you want to be that? Why do you want to be that dude that's just a numb skull? You know what a numb skull is? I mean, you don't have no feeling in your head. You're a numb skull. You're just dumb. I be doing dumb stuff. And they come meet with that brother, man. Now, why did you do that? He can't answer because his skull is numb. Man, you too young to be doing what the fools say. <laughs> you too young to hear that. <laughs> Truly searching your heart will cause you to value others. Did you know that? So once you get to the place well, you know what's wrong with you? See, that should have just blessed you. You don't understand. When you know your deficits and what's wrong with you, you take that before God and then you begin to value others. Because when you see your own mistakes, errors, and issues, you will understand that you can't easily throw away people or label them because they made a mistake. That's the path to the kingdom of God. If you can see yourself and know what's wrong with you, you'll take your mouth off of other people. Because you'll say, hey, if there's a chance for me, there has to be a chance for them. That's why the devil got you talking about everybody and bickering and yeah, you, hey, all the time. Because if you ever search your heart and see that witch or that jive turkey that's in there, You'd be like, oh man, and the Lord still loves me. But then I need to quit talking about folks. I need to start loving other folks. God has given me a chance. I need to give other folks a chance. Mark 11 and 25. And when you stand praying, do what? <laughs> Forgive if you have it ought against any. That your father also, which is in heaven, may do what? Okay, so if a person that hasn't forgiven and talking about folks and always other, what you going to God for? He don't hear you. He told you to forgive first so he can forgive you for being like that. Y'all, it's 2021, man. What, why we can't get along? Are you really angry at somebody like that in 2021? You need to take that anger and direct it to Bill Gates, the gates of hell. Fauci. Find somebody to direct that old anger to. Somebody that's just messing with the whole world over some money and control. Yeah. 
Amen. Our own hearts need forgiveness, compassion, and chances. Look at somebody and say, you need chances. You need chances. Look, don't take chances away from folks because you need chances. Don't X folks out because you need chances. Your heart needs forgiveness, compassion, and chances to be refined. When we can see this, it causes us to consider what others are going through and why they are the way they are. So you never assess why someone is the way they are until you first assess why you are the way you are. Look at somebody and say, search your heart. You got to see it in you first. What you see in yourself is what you're going to see in others. So if you hate on others, guess what? You hate yourself. If you're contrary and bickering and gossiping and cantankerous toward others, you hate yourself. Something about you you don't like. But if you can take that before God and search your heart, then you'll begin to search other people's heart. Well, maybe they didn't really mean it when they said it like that. Maybe I got it wrong. You start giving people the benefit of the doubt when you know you need it. I'm preaching in here. Amen. Psalms 34 and 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So he's near you when you have a broken heart. Now, this, this has been misused so much with the new age teachings in the church and stuff. They think a broken heart is somebody did them wrong. No, your heart, this is actually talking about your heart being broken because of your condition. Yeah, your condition broke you down. Talking, gossiping, hurting. Whatever you did put you in a place where you were wallowing in it. Your heart was broken. And God said, no, bring it to me. We always looking at it like, well, somebody did me wrong. Oh, come on, Lord. My heart is contrite. What do contrite mean? I oh, don't know, but it feel like this contrite is contriting. No. No. You sin, you get messed up. Folks stop liking you. Get a bad reputation. Did nobody want to be around you no more? Then you come before God and he says, okay, now you ready for me to fix this? Do you really want to deal with this? You ready to deal with it? You deal with everybody else. You know what's going on with everyone else's heart. You know their likes, their dislikes. You know all the rumors on them. You know all the information. You know everything about everybody. That's all you talk about when we're dealing with your heart. Can you go before God and confess that? Can you go before God and say, Lord, I'm gossiping because I'm down on myself. Help me, God. I don't like this group because they look better than me. Help me, God. I don't like these dudes because they're more prosperous than me. And I feel like I just don't have nothing. I keep failing. Help me, Lord. Can you go before him that honest? That's a broken heart. That's a contrite spirit. If you cannot put yourself in the position of others and truly feel and understand their pain, then you are no good to the kingdom of God. If you can't show compassion, you're nothing like Jesus. If you can't show mercy, you're nothing like him. You're like your father, the devil, who has no compassion, no mercy. All he does is try to destroy people. Is that what you're doing? He's the accuser 
of the brother, trying to find wrong in everyone. If your only concern is getting what you want or how you feel, then you are climbing fool's hill. Y'all ever heard of that? Fool's hill. You know who the God is? Ooh, just follow me. Come on. We'll get there. You just That's fool's hill. All the instruction and good advice is behind you. In the knapsack on the ground. You on the climbing the No. If your only concern is getting what you want or how you feel, then you are climbing fool's hill and will eventually what? You and the fool, y'all going to tumble down. He going to be laughing the whole time. Oh! <laughs> y'all just, <laughs> it's a wrap. You're going to tumble down. We'll be here waiting. We'll be here waiting. We're going to love you too. You know them folks that you just have to let them go? Go do the fool. I mean, but I want y'all, the church holding me back. Y'all rules too strict. With a K and a T, a strict a T. <laughs> y'all rule, y'all stop the fun, y'all stop people from, y'all just all in the way. Y'all, I can't do the things I want to do. I just come in. Okay. We'll be, we'll, we'll be here. We'll be here when you tumble down. Because you're going to tumble down. Because that hill can't be scaled. The fool never makes it all the way. You know, I'm, you, you're, in the, you're in the Euclid. You ain't gonna listen to what Jay is saying. I, you know, I just, I, you know, he, he just, I, 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 I think I got a better way to do it. Okay, we'll be here waiting on the tumble down because you're coming down. The Bible said when you think like that, that rises up in your heart. That's a haughty spirit. You're coming. Look, somebody say they're coming down. I mean, right in here. You try to talk to him, and, well, you know, well, okay. All right, I'll be right here. See you in a few years. Then they come back with their testimony. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Y'all know this is facts. This is facts. What happened to Brother John? He's been gone about three or four years. Here he come. <laughs> <It's, clears throat> Y'all, listen to what they saying. Because <laughs> some folks can't laugh because they all day way. Somebody's GPS is set to Fool's Hill right now in their phone. Arrows already pointing. <laughs> Proverbs 18 and 12, before destruction, the heart of a man is what? Once he start feeling like that, destruction. But before honor is what? Humility. Can you submit to the truth that's being preached? Can you submit to the people that's trying to help you? Don't you understand that the only reason we're taking time to teach you is because we love you. We want you to miss Fool's Hill. Summary! Look at somebody and say, search your heart. In these times, we need peace among ourselves more than ever before. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Peace among ourselves more than ever before. Y'all, we are fighting the devil 24-7. Why would we fight each other? We are fighting agendas. We're fighting end time demons. We're fighting dark matter. We're fighting all. Why would we be fighting each other? These times, we need peace among ourselves. 
We need to feel the love of our brothers and sisters in the faith so that we can be strengthened by them. We need to forgive and love our fellow youth. Amen. You know, and I say it all the time in here, you know, this, our church is unique because people pick up and move here from other places. So when they move here, they dislodge their children or, you know, from the, wherever they were and place them in an already established system here. And that's very difficult for children, especially teenagers. So they're displaced teenagers. So God forbid we got witchcraft in the young folks where we get new young folks and them, the, the pre-existing ones don't want to get along with the new ones. We're not doing that. Amen. We're not doing that. No, 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 no. You're not grouping up because we have people who need help that come here. When parents do that, they want their children helped. So they're not dropping their kids off in a department that's divided. Amen. Like if you can't get along with everybody, you need to stop coming. No, we're not putting you somewhere else. No, no, no. Stay home. Stay home and watch TV. Because we have people with real needs in here. EX Ministries has saved people's lives. You're not getting away of that. We need to forgive and love our fellow youth. When we seek to please ourselves, be disobedient to God, and purposely harm others, we weaken ourselves and will eventually give in to sin and the plan of the enemy. You are weakening yourself. But if we search our hearts, we will see it before it manifests. We can deal with the why and avoid tumbling down fool's hill at a young age. Oh, but some of us are a little older, and we did tumble down that hill. So our goal is to stop you from doing it, young folks. Amen? Because it don't feel good when you break that crown. Amen? We've tumbled down. So many adults wish they had the information, the ministry, and the support that you have right now at this church. I don't understand. I don't understand. Ah, see, I'm going to go out here and go, go. Then they go somewhere else and you, oh, the love is gone. <laughs> so many of us did not have a place like this to develop spiritually when we were younger. It's up to you to take advantage of it and get what you need to make it through these times. If you are keeping up clamor and foolishness and causing divisions among yourselves, then your heart is evil and you will reap the consequences of it at an early age. Pastor just spoke. I'm like that thing on Mandalorian. I have spoken. Whatever that thing is. Yeah. Remember this message. Take notes. If you search your heart, what will you find? Don't keep falling into the same issues, but find out what is going on in your heart. Why can't you love others as yourself? It's a heart issue. Why can't you get along with everyone instead of a select few? It's a heart issue. Why do you keep having outbursts and uncontrolled anger episodes? You're crazy. Your heart is crazy. Why do you highlight the wrong in everyone? Why can't you follow the leadership of the church? Why are you fighting against the plan of your own home? I don't understand. You know, that, that just, that's an impossible thing in my house. You're eating and sleeping. 
breathing air. And, like, I'm not gonna even go back and forth. There's not gonna be no... Why do you highlight the wrong in everyone? Why can't you follow the leadership? Why are you rejecting the very message of truth that God is trying to give you? He's trying to save your life in here and you're rejecting it. These are all hard issues and if they are not resolved, you will lose in this life. Are you going to let the devil make you lose in this life? You're really going to sit up and make the devil, I mean, allow the devil to make you ignore what's being given to you. That's what you're going to do? These are all hard issues. It's one thing to not know the truth in error, but it's a totally different thing to be given the truth and reject it. Search your hearts, young people, and see what the problem truly is. Proverbs speaks wisdom here, and it says, 4 and 20, my son, attend to my words and incline thine ear unto my sayings. Pay attention. And let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Look at somebody say search your heart. You know why you need to search it? Because out of your heart are the issues of life. So if you want to find out what's wrong with your life. Look at somebody and say search your heart. Find out what's wrong with your heart. Because out of your heart flows the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth. Shut up. Just shut up. <laughs> shut up. Put away from thee a forward mouth. And perverse lips. Put what? Far from. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Keep your eyes on where you're going. Protect where you're going. Amen? Don't let anyone, don't let the devil push you to the right or the left. Keep your eyes. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight up before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. Oh, ponder. Think about, consider what you're about to do. Think about the path that you're on, where your feet are taking you. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left, and do what? Remove thy foot from evil. Everyone stand to your feet. You know, I can pray for certain people and I'll be like, Lord, I just want them to get it or whatever. And the Holy Spirit will speak to me every time and tell me some people aren't reachable. <laughs> While I was just preaching that message, they were ignoring me. Because they're not reachable. Yeah, people right in here. They were trying to distract you. Because they're not reachable. So I pray for those that can hear. The Bible says you have to have ears to hear. Everybody with ears can't hear. Some folks, the way they're going is the way they're going to go no matter what you say. Because they don't have ears to hear or eyes to see. But I'm not talking to them today. I'm talking to those that want to make sure the path they're on is the right path. God, teach me to search my heart. If that's you, if you want God to help you search your heart, just come up here right now. Come on.
that's you, search my heart, God. There are things I need to discover about myself to stop the devil from putting me back in this same situation over and over. I need to search my heart. I need the ability to see what you see, God. I need the ability to search like you, God. If it's there, I need to find it so that it can be removed. I can be set free. And I don't have to climb fool's hills. Ooh, yeah, you can climb it as an adult too. You could be halfway up it right now. You won't get to the top. You're going to tumble down. So I need you, God. Set my path. Make it straight. So that I don't look to the right or to the left. I can stay on this course. Some of y'all, there's a calling on your life. Just for this time. You don't see what everybody sees. You don't hear what everybody hears. You, you, you're just thinking differently. There's a calling on you to help folks make it through this time. But you got to be on the right path. Can't be helping them if you can't help yourself. So you need God to search your heart. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your truth. And though this message may have had elements for youth, this is a message for us all. Help us, God, to search our hearts. God, those areas that we've hidden from everyone, that darkest, deepest corner of our heart that we protect from everyone, the thing we think we do that nobody knows we're doing. Father God, wherever that is, wherever, whatever, however it got there, God, Help us to search our hearts so we can be clean. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. So right now, God, even in our brokenness, come on, lift your hands up. As we are broken human beings in 2021, wading through these end times with just so much going on, as terrible as things are, all the lies, all the deceptions, all the, the new age, the new world order, all of the issues in our society, all of, Father God, the deception and the strong delusion. While all of that is going on, God, we are concerned right now about our condition. No matter how wicked the world is, help us with our condition. Help us to search our heart. God, to take away the sin. Take away the trauma. Take away the dysfunction. Take away the bad opinion. Take away the abandonment we experience. Take away that divorce we experienced where it was hatred, self-hatred developed. Father God, take all those things away. Search our hearts that we can be clean before you in this last hour. No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, no matter what we've said, no matter how we've treated others, how we treated ourselves, forgive us, Lord. We will do better. Show us ourselves. Show us ourselves. In the name that is above every name. And even as we leave this service, once the service is dismissed, God, and we go home over in the night, God, begin to even give us visions and dreams about the things that need to change in our lives. When we awake in the morning and we get before you, show us who we need to be. Everything that needs to change. Everything that's leading us astray. Everything that's harming others. Everything that you're displeased with. Reveal it to us, God, as we search our hearts for you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Come on, lift your hands. Thank you, Lord. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Whatever I got to do, whatever I have to do, if I got to make a phone call, if I got to apologize, if I got to go to somebody, even after church, even in this building, whatever I have to do, help me to make it right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God heard you.
He heard you, and now he just needs to see you change it. When he shows it to you, be willing to change it. Amen? Amen. You can be seated. Go back to your seats. Amen.